Hi everyone, welcome back to the Heterogeneous Parallel Programming class. We're at lecture 4.3 and we're going to learn how to write a better reduction kernel. The objective of this lecture is help you to learn to write a better reduction kernel through a better resource efficiency analysis. And um, uh, we're going to adjust the threat to data index mapping according to that resource efficiency analysis. And then uh, we will see that um, uh, it will actually have a very uh, productive effect on uh, the resource usage in the presence of turning off threats and control divergence. So um, here we will make some observations about the uh, kernel, the naive reduction kernel that we developed in the previous lecture. In, uh, so if we look at the loop that uh, uh, compute the reduction uh, steps, then uh, during the first iteration of the loop, um, all the threads will be active. However, in the second iteration of the, uh, uh, the loop, every other thread will be turned off. And then the third iteration of the loop, every four threads will be active, and uh, three out of every four threads will be turned off. So we will be seeing a, a pattern of active, inactive, active, inactive threads in each warp. And therefore, we'll have two control flow paths that uh, will, uh, each warp will always traverse starting from the second iteration. The threads that perform addition and the threads that do not perform addition. Those threads that do not perform addition still will consume execution resources um, that uh, we, as we explained in one of the previous lectures on control divergence. So now, uh, we will see that uh, uh, after the first step, only half or fewer of the threads will be executing. And um, uh, so if we continue this, after the fifth step, then entire warps in each block will begin to fail the if test. So this is actually a good thing, because when entire warps uh, fail the, um, the, re the test, then at least they will uh, begin to consume fewer, uh, less execution resources. And um, But the problem is, after, uh, even after this point, if we look at the, the active warps, the warps that have active threads, only one of the threads in that warp is active. So we're going to have multiple warps, and each one will only have one active thread. And this will continue for strides 32, 64, 128, 256, and 512. So for the uh, stride equal to 32, we're going to actually have 32 warps, and each one only has one active thread, and uh, everyone else is going to be inactive. And then 64 will have, uh, you know, uh, half of the warps will be totally inactive, and half of the warps uh, will, also, uh, uh, will have only one active thread. So this is a very bad way of uh, using execution resources, and we can expect the, uh, the energy efficiency of this kind of algorithm to be very low, and the performance will be fairly low, considering the amount of resources uh, it uses for the execution. So uh, this brings us to uh, the idea that we can readjust the threat index to data mapping in order to improve the efficiency. So uh, in some algorithms, we can shift the index usage to improve the divergence as long as the operations being performed are cumulative and associative operators. And uh, it turned out that since we're doing reduction, uh, we automatically have satisfied these two requirements. So uh, we can adjust the usage of index mapping so that we always compact the partial sums into the front locations of the partial sum array. So uh, if we look at the previous kernel, the partial sums were in even locations after the first iteration, and every uh, four locations in after the second iteration, and so on. So they are actually uh, sp fairly sparse, sparsely uh, distributed in the partial sum array. But uh, here, we're going to adjust the index so that all the um, uh, partial sums will be packed into the first part of the partial sum array. And this will keep the active threads consecutive, and therefore minimizing the control divergence and improve the resource usage efficiency. So here is an example of four threads. We have the same eight elements uh, in, as the previous example, but uh, instead of adding uh, neighboring two elements in the first step, we actually have uh, add 
the elements that are half a, a section away in the first step. So uh, then we write into the uh, the first half of the uh, the section. So all, all the four threads will be uh, adding uh, will be responsible for consecutive locations of the data rather than uh, even locations of the data in the previous case. And then uh, they will add its responsible location with a location that is uh, half the section away in the first iteration and then quarter the section away in the second iteration and so on. And we still have progressively fewer threads to participate in the computation. So here in the, the, in the second iteration, we only have two threads active in this small example. But the threads that are active are going to be consecutive. So this gives us a much better uh, way of uh, you know, the, uh, having packing all the active threads into the front warps. And this will reduce the control divergence and improve the resource usage. So this uh, here is the piece of code in the uh, loop that we need to write, uh, we need to change in order to uh, achieve this better behavior. So instead of starting with the uh, stride value one and multiply it by two in every iteration, we actually go backwards. We start the stride as block dim dot x. So we start from half the section away, and then um, we uh, divide the stride value by two in after every iteration. And then um, we test whether the stride value is greater than zero, because if the stride value reaches one, that signifies that uh, we are at the very end of the, uh, the reduction. Uh, only one thread will be adding those two element, neighboring elements together for, uh, into the final answer. So we still do the same thread. We still need to do the same thread for the uh, same reason that we talked about in the previous lecture. And um, we still add up all the partial sums uh, with the stride. It's just that the stride is going through a different sequence of values in the loop. So this is all we need to adjust in the previous kernel in order to have a uh, much better access pattern and control uh, divergence pattern. So let's do a little bit of analysis about what this piece of code does. So let's say for 1,024 thread block, um, we are, we're going to start with all the 1,024 threads adding um, elements that are uh, 1,024 away from each other. And then um, we're going to go through, uh, we're going to go to the next iteration, only 512 of them are active. However, in this case, all the 512 of them are in uh, consecutive threads. So that consists of 16 warps. So the first 16 warps will be all active. And then the next 16 warps uh, will have all their threads inactive. So this way, we actually don't have any control divergence. All the threads in one, in the first 16 warps will make the same decisions. All the threads in the, uh, the, the next, uh, the uh, next 16 warps will do the, will make the same decision. So when then the next iteration, we only have 256 threads active. And this actually gives us eight warps. So we have eight warps worth of threads all active and then uh, 24 of the threads uh, will become inactive. So again, we'll have no control divergence and um, uh, all the uh, threads will be making the same decisions. So this way, all the active threads are full. That is, they all have all the 32 threads active. So uh, every time these active warps come into execution, all the threads are producing useful value. So this is a much better way of reusing resources. Now, once we get down to 32, then we will start to have um, control divergence because uh, in, when we uh, get down to, let's say, 60, uh, 16, then the first half, uh, only one warp in the entire thread block is going to be active. Everyone else will be inactive. And in that single thread block, we're going to have progressively fewer threads active in the next few steps. So we will have control divergence. However, only one of the warps will be consuming execution resources because all these other warps are completely inactive and they will not be consuming execution resources. So the final five steps will still have control divergence. However, um, we still have better resource utilization compared to the previous kernel. So this gives us a much faster, much more efficient uh, kernel, even though we're making a very small change to the code. In fact, if uh, if you don't understand 
what's going on when you look at those two pieces of code, most people will not even notice the difference at the first glance. So this leads to us to a kind of a, sto a story that um, uh, my PhD advisor, Yale Pat, um, you know, told us many, many years ago. And the story is about an old engineer. So now there's a factory with a very old machine, and um, uh, there's an engineer who maintained that machine for 30 years. And then uh, finally, the uh, engineer has reached the age for retirement. So um, the, uh, the owner got a little bit worried and said, hey, you know what, if the machine ever gets into a problem, can I call you back to, you know, for a service? And the engineer said, no problem. And um, uh, the owner said, how much uh, you know, would you like to charge me for an hour of work? Uh, the engineer said, oh, I'll charge you 50 cents for, uh, for the hour, so for each hour. And the owner was happy about it. So then, uh, you know, there was one day that um, the machine stopped working. And then the, uh, the new engineer tried all kinds of uh, things in the menu and then, uh, you know, tried all kinds of, uh, you know, the other things and then the machine just doesn't start. So the owner calls back the engine, uh, old engineer and say, could you, uh, uh, you know, um, could you help us? So the old engineer, you know what, uh, kind of, you know, uh, went around the machine and then turned a few uh, things and then uh, the machine still doesn't start. Start and then he look around and then uh, you know uh, did a few other things and finally he said aha so he uh, went and, and uh, did turn one more knob and then he kicked the machine and then the machine started working so the whole thing lasted for less than an hour so the owner was very happy and the owner said uh, oh just send us the bill that uh, you know I'll pay you for for the uh, for the uh, hours that you spent so the old engineer eventually sent back a bill of a thousand dollars and the owner got uh, very angry and say you only spent an hour, an hour here and how uh, you, you also told me that you, it's going to be 50 cents an hour why did you send me a thousand dollar bill the engineer said um, yeah it, uh, here here is the breakdown I spent one hour um, uh, on this particular visit but I spent um, uh, numerous hours before this just to be able to get to that knob that I turned and then the kick that I made. So uh, I already gave you a huge discount on all those hours that I had to spend in order to, uh, to, to, uh, to learn this kind of knowledge. So you're paying $999.50 for a small portion of those hours that I spent in order to be able to do this and then uh, 50 cents for the hour I actually applied that knowledge. So um, this is an, uh, exa uh, a story that I always remember about uh, you know, parallel algorithms and parallel uh, uh, programming. In many ways, uh, you, the, uh, the kind of uh, things that you do can be of very subtle difference and only um, a few lines of dif uh, difference in terms of implementation. However, oftentimes the concepts involved require hours and hours of learning before you can get there. So this is the reason why you're taking this, this course. Um, we're hoping to teach you these hours of insights so that you can make some very small minor changes to your code and make dramatic differences in your results. So this um, concludes uh, the uh, lecture. And um, uh, for those of you who would like to be, uh, to, to understand more about uh, the difference between a naive kernel and a more improved kernel, I'd like to encourage you to finish reading section 6.1 of the textbook. And um, uh, during the next few lectures, I'm actually going to introduce yet another um, uh, reduction kernel that has very similar performance effect, but has slightly different um, you know, behavior to be able to support a, uh, what we call the scan computation. So um, uh, looking forward to seeing you in the next lecture. Thank you.